Hey there, I'm uh, in Pasadena with a city hall behind me. In Pasadena, you'll know that from uh, the, the TV show Big Bang Theory. And um, I'm going to talk to you, kind of give you an introduction to mailbox money, um, all the different sources of revenue that a musician and a songwriter composer can expect to see over the life of their career. And um, one of the uh, my main sources of income is royalties from music I've written for television. And the music uh, royalties will basically come in from songwriting um, and from composing. Uh, it will come from three sources. Um, it'll come from PROs, which is performing rights organizations like BMI and ASCAP. I'm going to go into greater details on all of these subjects. So these are, this is just kind of an intro. Um, and uh, the uh, PROs basically pay for music when it's played on TV when it's played on the radio, um, when it's played in a hotel, for example, or if you hear music at, when you're walking around a grocery store or a store or something like that, those are all, those all generate royalties. And those all get paid through the PROs to you as a songwriter and publisher. Um, a second source of revenue is mechanicals. Um, and that would be from the record company, so based on sales. So every time a CD is sold, um, for every song, 9.1 cents is, is paid out to the writers and the publishers on the song. And so if you are the writer and the publisher 100% of the song, you would get all nine cents of that, basically 9.1 cents. And if it sold you know, 100,000 units, then you're looking at $9,100. If it sold a million units, you're looking at $91,000, and so on and so forth. So that's a second source of income, uh, what we call mailbox money, because that just shows up usually quarterly in, in little, little bits. Um, and then uh, a third source of income is just a unique one for people that have uh, that write worship music and then they would have uh, money that's generated by church uh, copyright licensing and that CCLI pays uh, collects money from churches to pay out to writers of worship music and Christian music and so if you write a worship song you could feasibly get three sources of income from the record sales from radio use and from church use so that's one source of income uh, royalties, like I said, that's one of my main sources of income, and that is uh, something that, that uh, can be available to any musician or producer or, you know, that gets involved in songwriting, and obviously to songwriters and uh, producers, I mean songwriters and, and composers as well. Um, another source of income largely is from, from union work. So if you're in the union and you say you play on a film, then there's, uh, you get paid for doing that. But what you're getting paid for is the primary use, the first use, which in the case of a feature film would be US theatrical. Everything other than that is, is considered what's called secondary market money. And that, that is uh, foreign theatrical, cable use, network use, DVD sales, rentals, uh, Netflix, all of those uh, revenue streams, airline use, um, all of those revenue streams get Put into a fund, 1% uh, of that is taken and given to the musicians union to be split among all the musicians. Um, there was a story about, and I, I don't know about the exact numbers on this, but there's a story about Tommy Tedesco um, where he had done some guitar overdubs, but the whole score was done in England, which is non-union, and then they brought the score back here and the composer, it may have been John Williams, wanted t uh, Tommy to play some uh, overdubs on it. So he was the only union musician on the entire contract and for that one film he got like a check for two hundred fifty thousand dollars because that represented one percent of producers gross which would have been say 25 million that's if it made 25 million dollars in foreign theatrical and all those other uh, sources that I told just mentioned um, then one percent of that goes to the union and if he's the only player on it then he basically gets all of that money so uh, I've gotten some pretty decent checks that way because maybe there's just two or three musicians on a contract and it generates a, a few thousand dollars or a few hundred thousand dollars or even a million dollars and then I get a piece of that, that pie. Um, so that's another source of income. Um, royal, royalty, uh, you get also get, uh, if you play on a jingle, every time they, uh, if it's, again, this is all union based, every time they use that jingle, um, after 13 weeks you have to get, you get paid again, um, just as if you played on it. Um, I've gotten, I, I played on uh, Confident by Justin Bieber on the Journal's record, and that was, um, uh, that was um, only iTunes release. 
but then they, I guess what happened was they, they decided to do a, um, uh, a CD hard copy release of it. And so I got paid again for that session just recently, even though that session was years ago, I got a check for that as well. Um, so I got kind of paid all over again for what I did. Uh, because it was a, it's called a new use, and so for records, that's oftentimes the case. If you're on a record, I mean, there's so many sources of revenue here. Um, if you're on a record, and it pays, uh, it plays on a movie, and you're on the union contract for that song, then the movie producers have to pay you as if you worked on that movie. And so it may be just a simple little $300 um, sideman rate, but now you're on that contract for that. So all the you're, you're named on that contract, so if there's secondary market money and so on and so forth. So there's, like, again, I'm, this is just kind of a, a, a primer, primer of, of uh, sources of music or sources of money uh, for you as a musician, how you can kind of tap into that. It's really a way to allow you to keep doing what you're doing. And if you have a slow month gig-wise or session-wise, you, you might make up for, for a check or two here. Um, I get a check every year for secondary market money. I also get a check every year for the records I play on. They pay in, the record companies pay into a pool that gets split up among all the musicians. And if you don't work on anything, you won't, you know, you won't see any money for it, but uh, you work on something, say you do one record, it'll, you'll get something the next year, and then if that's the only record you worked on, then you get a little less and a little less and a little less until five years down the road, you won't get anything. That's how it's, I've kind of seen it pay out at this point. Um, what are some other sources? You just you just never know. I, I get um, oh on YouTube. You guys help me out here too. Um, every time you get a view on YouTube, it's it generates a fraction of a penny, um, and I have it set to uh, I have my YouTube threshold set to a hundred dollars. Um, so they don't send me a check or deposit a check until I hit, get to a hundred dollars, which happens about every four months or so. So that you can calculate that how much I'm making a month off my YouTube channel. My goal is to get to a hundred dollars a month so I can at least pay for my, my Starbucks. Um, and uh, yeah, there's more sources. I'm going to talk more about them. You'll see videos in the future. Uh, please share um, these videos with your musician friends, that, especially not guitar players, because I know most of you are, um, so they can start learning how to make money in the business. Um, and they can learn how to um, basically stay in the game. That's the key. If you're if you're constantly having to do other jobs, that means that's less time you can spend gen, uh, creating. And uh, that's where you know when you're creating, that's when you're creating really an opportunity to make money. Okay. So God bless you guys. I'll talk to you soon and stay in touch. Bye bye.